Hello, welcome to the Jerome Bee Farm. It's Saturday, January 12th. Uh, it's a pretty nice day. It's below freezing still. It's probably about 20, 25 degrees, but there's no wind and the sun's out, so it's it's really nice. Uh, I got a problem here in the bee yard. So the last warm spell we had, we had a day that got up about 50 degrees and I came down here and I walked around I looked at every hive every hive was flying around doing cleansing flights and uh, I got to the last one over here and there was not much going on in front of it at all so I mean there was no activity so I got to looking close and I found evidence that I've got a skunk coming in here and getting into the bees and what a skunk will do is they will scratch on the on the entrance a bee will come down I don't know if they grab it with their hand or they get it with their mouth but it winds up in the in the skunk's mouth and they chew them up and they'll chew on them until they get a big wad of bees in their mouth carcasses or bones whatever and they they chew it up and get all the juice and protein out of the bees and I had a little bit of this going on last year but it wasn't very bad and I didn't do anything about it and it didn't it wasn't a big problem but it's a big problem now so I will uh, grab the camera and walk around and, and show you uh, evidence that I see and uh, I think I have a live trap in my old barn over here and uh, I'm gonna put some dog food or something in that and uh, set it down here and see if we can catch us a skunk so I assume it's a skunk uh, I don't know if a possum will do that or not but I've always heard it's a skunk but it's it's some kind of small animal that's chewing the bees up into a wad and then spitting them out on the ground so that I'll uh, show you around and show you what I found but come here Hey, wanna go fetch? Huh? Go fetch? Come on. Come on. Come on. Ready? <laughs> oh, you broke it. <laughs> okay, I got my uh, new auxiliary mic on here. It's uh, one of those red and black Rode, R-O-D-E, or maybe it's Rode, I don't know. Hey, what do you want? Huh? What? So, uh, let's look at these hives, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. You gonna help me, Buck? You gonna help? Come on. So, I call these, uh, I, when I number them, these are the last ones down here. So this is like hive 23 or something like that. So this is a strong hive right here. This was a swarm last year. So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about with this skunk. Okay, look out. Ooh, Buck. So, come back. Right here, 
know if you can see these. You gonna eat one? one. So this right here is what I'm talking about. That's a bunch of bees that are chewed up into a plug. And I don't know how many bees are in that it takes to make that, but it's too many. So and there's one, two, there's a bunch right here. So their the ground is just covered with them right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So they're all over the ground right there. So what the skunk's doing, he's coming up and scratching on the door here. B comes out and he gets eight. So got all of these. I'll set them up here. Kind of get a look at them. And uh for a beekeeper, that's kind of disgusting. All the work put into this so some critter can come down here and eat them. It's kind of like a bear ripping your into your hives. This is just killing them one at a time. So you can see that's a bunch of bees that have been killed. Another thing that does that makes your bees uh, really aggressive and it reduces the cluster size and if the queen's not laying this time of the year it affects their ability to keep warm and when it's getting down into the single digits uh, that's putting these hives at risk big time so this next hive here I call this one Mrs. Dickerson hive because it's a cutout we got up the street from our neighbor and it's on Dickerson Street and there's two or three down here there's some there's some there's some and this is a small colony as you can see so I did this cut out I don't know you can go back in my videos and see the exact date but it was in the middle of summer and they had a hard time getting going and I had to add brood frames to them to keep them going and uh, they're gonna have a hard time this winter anyway as you can see it's a single deep so this hive may may be gone now because of that this one here was a split that I did it's a single deep as well I don't see a whole lot around here like that but it didn't have a lot of bees to begin with so let's go on around the corner over here it's really prevalent you can see it so I have these hives here sitting on this piece of steel siding or roofing and you can look along here and see all the plugs see right there's one two look at all these so there's a bee came out it's kind of cold for them to be breaking cluster right now that there's one right there so look right here at all of these just bunches of them and here's from here so in those two colonies there are pretty small these here are larger so they'll probably survive right, look right here there's some look at all of this And there's a bunch in here right there 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 there's a big one there so that's in just about in front of every one of these hives so the first place I noticed it was this one right here because there was no activity in front it may have been going on on the other ones at that time but I looked around and I didn't see any but there's quite a few right here as you can see I'll set them up here <clears throat> I 
look at all that so if you go back to my video where I put sugar on the hives and I lifted this hive here it was pretty lightweight so I was concerned about this one surviving winter to begin with you know let alone having all this happen so that's in front of just about every one of these so let's go uh, over to the old barn and see if we can find a trap and we'll get a trap put out here I suspect he's coming out of these woods back here there's some uh, this is the west side if you go to my west side trail video you can see me walking through all of this there's a trail cut down there and uh, there's quite a few dugout holes where animals could be living in there so I assume he's back in there okay here it is over here That ought to do the trick. So I'm gonna get this thing out there and get it set up. So I wonder where the best place to put this will be. I'm gonna I think I'll just put it like right here in front of these because that's where probably the I don't know the heaviest concentration of bees are with the strongest hives and the biggest amounts of plugs I think are like right in here so I'm gonna put it right in there and we'll get her set up okay the way this thing works It's got a little keeper right here, so when it sets off, the other, the animal can't lift this up, so you raise this keeper up, push that flap in, and raise this up here. Then the trigger has a little actuator right here, and a little grabber that holds onto this gate. So you just raise it up, push that underneath there. Hey, Book. He smells like a skunk. A little bit. <laughs> anyway, when uh, they step on this plate, it just shuts the door like that. So I got some uh, dog food in my pocket. I'm going to set this right here. You can probably set it like it's like right on the edge so it'll be really sensitive okay let's get it going Buck doesn't get in and try to. I mean, he can't fit in there, but he might scratch it around and set off the uh, trap. So you have to put it your bait. You don't want it close to the walls. So you want him to come around and go inside it. If you put it close to the walls, they'll just reach in and grab it, and that'll be that. 
There. This is where you release your animal. Whereas I don't know if I'm going to be releasing a skunk or not. We may use another method. So there we go, it's all set. And uh, hopefully we'll have us a skunk in the morning. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll be making another video if we, if we catch a skunk. So I'll be talking to you later.